which exercises are best for muscle growth. Are compound exercises or isolation exercises better? What about free weight exercises versus machine exercises? And which exercise should you place first and which one last in your workout? These are the questions that I'm going to answer in this three minute Thursday video. So let's put three minutes on a clock and let's go. Let's first have a look at compound exercises versus isolation exercises. Both of these exercises are effective for building muscle mass, but there are situations where one or the other are the better choice. Compound exercises recruit a large amount of muscle mass and involve movement at multiple joints, which is why they are also called multi-joint exercises. Examples include squats or, for example, lat pulldowns. And because they work several muscles at the same time, they're really great bang for your buck and time efficient. Compound exercises also activate many stabilizing muscles that you wouldn't train otherwise. However, compound exercises are usually also technically more demanding and they cause more fatigue. It's also common that things other than the target muscle become a limiting factor. For example, it's very likely that your core gives out before your quads do when doing front squats. And this is not exactly great for muscle hypertrophy because that means you can't push your quads close to failure. On the other hand, isolation exercises only train one muscle group in isolation. Examples include biceps curls and quad extensions. Isolation exercises are usually easier to learn than compound exercises. They cause less fatigue because fewer muscles are involved and they target a specific muscle more effectively. However, they are also less time efficient because you need several exercises to hit the same muscles as you do with one single compound exercise. So there are pros and cons for both. And the same goes for machine exercises. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. One advantage of using machines is that they're easier to learn and the injury risk is smaller because the machine very much guides the movement and don't allow for much technique breakdown. And because of the extra guidance, you might go heavier and push yourself harder than with the free weight counterparts. Machines also allow you to do exercises that would be very difficult to do with free weights, such as quad extensions. However, the machines might not be built to suit your specific anatomy. And the machines often don't translate very well to real life movement patterns. And this is where free weight exercises have the upper hand. They are more functional in that they directly translate into daily movements. Additionally, free weights also train your coordination and balance, but because of that, they're also more difficult to do with proper technique and thus can pose a slightly bigger injury risk. It's important to note though, that both free weight and machine exercises are equally effective for building muscle mass. So which one of them you choose largely depends on your personal preference, whether a certain piece of equipment is available at your gym and how experienced you are in lifting weights. And besides classifying exercises into compound versus isolation exercises and free weight versus machine exercises, we can also label exercises as bilateral, unilateral or isolateral. Bilateral means that you lift the same weight with both limbs at the same time, such as in squats. The advantage is that this is more time efficient than training each side after one another but it can also lead to imbalances when one side is stronger and takes over. Unilateral exercises, such as lunges, are able to correct these imbalances by training one side at a time. However, it also takes twice as long. And this is why isolateral exercises, such as dumbbell biceps curls, where you train the left and right simultaneously, but move independent weights, kind of combine the best of both worlds. They're time efficient and prevent muscular imbalances. However, isolateral variations are not available for each exercise. Taking all of these pros and cons into consideration, this is how I would order my exercises within a workout. First, I do compound free weight exercises because they're the most demanding, both in terms of technique and energy requirements. Then I'd follow that up with any machine compound exercises because they're still physically demanding as it involves quite a lot of muscle mass, but because you're using machines, you don't need to have laser sharp focus. And lastly, I do any isolation exercises, be that with machines or free weights. 
All in all, I'd aim for around five to seven exercises in total per workout session, so about one to two in each category. Also, I would alternate between exercises for different muscle groups, for example, between push and pull exercises or between upper and lower body exercises. And it really doesn't matter whether you do bilateral or unilateral or isolateral exercises at the beginning or the end of your workout. The important part is that you include all three types. I went over time again. I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's really hard to actually cram everything into three minutes. So uh, yeah, probably next time I'm gonna make something like a five minute Friday, uh, simply because five minutes is probably plenty to explain most things, but three minutes is a bit short sometimes. And despite going over time, there wasn't time for me to cover everything I wanted to talk about. So there's still plenty more. And that's why in this video, I focused more on the hypertrophy side of things, but it also completely left out strength. And also I haven't given any examples of exercises that I deem best for a particular muscle group. And that's because I wanna make an entire series about exactly that. And I already have two such videos on my channel about the best exercises for your lats and training your calves. And I plan to continue this series next year. There will probably be around one such video every month until I've covered all the major muscle groups. So yeah, let me know what you think about that and also tell me in the comments down below with which muscle groups I should start. But yeah, that's it. So give me a like if you found this video informative and useful. Hit that subscribe button so you're not gonna miss my future videos and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye.